Here with me is Lori Wallach, one of our regular guests, an old friend, and uh, as in longtime friend, <laughs> and executive director for Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. Tradewatch.org is the website and uh, the Twitter handle. What? what? I've got a couple of Twitter handles here for you. Wallach Lori and PCGTW. What do you prefer? Wallach Lori. Wallach Lori okay. it is. W-A-L-L-A-C-H-L-O-R-I. Lori, welcome back. Thank you very much. Great having you with us. So uh, what's the latest on, uh, you know, you and I agree that and have for many, many years that Donald Trump's trade policies, or not that Donald Trump's trade that, that the neoliberal trade policies that really came in with the Reagan administration in a big way, they negotiated NAFTA, George Herbert Walker Bush's administration finalized those negotiations. Um, this, this was always Republican trade policy. There have always been large chunks of the Democratic Party who have opposed this in the modern era. It's the shared Browns of the world. Um, and yet, this, re this Republican trade policy, the guy who has semi-successfully pushed back against it is Donald Trump, and it helped get him elected running on a democratic position, um, which is, yes, we need tariffs, yes, we need protectionist policies, and yes, these trade, so-called trade agreements actually suck. They're destroying American jobs. So um, it, it puts us both, I think, in this very awkward position of saying, you know, thank God Trump is having a conversation about this because we've had two Democratic presidents who are unwilling to, um, and a lot of Democratic members of Congress won't, although there's some of them are out there screaming into the wind, you know, from Bernie Sanders to, to, to Sherrod Brown, like I said. Um, but on the other hand, Trump is doing it completely wrong. He's demagoguing this issue and all this kind of stuff. So long way to set up, you know, where are we at right now? Where's the, where's the whole trade thing going? Um, and also kind of the sub-question to that, and then feel free to go off at length, is where are the Democrats in all this? So right now we're at this pivot point on NAFTA. So obviously NAFTA has to be replaced. Right. Almost a million jobs have been certified by the government as officially lost to NAFTA. Which means it's really probably four or five million. So it's four or five million. It's a way under count. Yeah. And so it has to be replaced. And Trump repeated what Democrats have said for a long time. Democrats in Congress tried to stop NAFTA. However, the deal that Trump signed to replace NAFTA, it wouldn't stop the job outsourcing because the labor and environmental improvements in their enforcement's not strong enough. But he let pharma rig new protections in there so it would raise medicine prices. So it won't in fix the, US the existing or in Mexico problem or and it would lock in high prices here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's in that factor worse than the status quo. Now on the other hand, he got rid of those outrageous corporate tribunals that have taken hundreds of millions of tax dollars attacking environmental laws, etc. So this gets to your second question. Where are the Democrats? Miraculously, the congressional Democrats are 100% united and Pelosi's being tough and saying to Trump, Either you renegotiate your renegotiate agreements, right. fix the labor and environmental standards and their enforcement so it means something to stop the outsourcing and to raise wages in Mexico so the draw right. of jobs is stopped, and you have to take out that pharma garbage or no vote. And she's wow. holding firm. Wow, that's great. So now the show up, showdown is what will the administration do? Now, I read a piece, this was speculative, this was not like New York Times reporting, uh, I, I, I think it might have been over on Daily Coast, uh, it was an opinion piece, um, speculating that she is willing to, or might be willing to offer him a yes vote on his NAFTA deal in exchange for a two-year budget deal so that the budget and the government shutdown doesn't uh, become an issue in the election year next year. Do you know anything about that? I don't know anything about that, but what I do know is that the, the leverage that Pelosi has to make it such that there can't be a vote on NAFTA gives her a lot of power because Trump really has nothing to show for all of his trade promises. As you know, the trade deficit's been up every year of Trump. Oh, and 200,000 jobs have officially been outsourced since he became president? Exactly. Relative to even where Obama was, and that was a huge deficit, it's increased. Right. His China trade deal is nowhere. The outsourcing continues. They're right. making government contracts with companies that outsource. Like, everything he promised, China has not been called, has not been listed as a currency violator. None of the things he promised have happened. So the only thing he's got is NAFTA. Mm. 
And so to deliver on his NAFTA fixing promise and to deliver on his promise to bring down medicine prices is only one way he can go through the House Democrats. And he has to and renegotiate the deal. And it requires renegotiating the renegotiated deal. Now, will he do it? Because it basically makes him fess up that his deal wasn't perfect. Right. But if he does it, it might be something worth passing, but it's going to be obvious it's the Democrats' deal because right. they wouldn't pass his deal. That's the big, and that could all blow up at any moment because what Pelosi has said is, don't put this agreement in until I'm ready or I'm going to blow it up. Yeah. And yeah. they might. Now, you live in D.C., you're... you're in the, in the scrum, in the milieu, you know, you know what's going on there. And um, I'm kind of glad to be out of town, frankly, but it's, in any case, um, when Bill Clinton first embraced NAFTA in 1992, he was in the minority among Democrats. He was loudly attacked by a lot of Democrats. Many Democratic voters, apparently about half of Ross Perot voters were actually Democrats. Um, but over time, the Democratic Party moved in that direction or at least much of it. There's always been a strong resistance among the Democrats. Uh, these, as I said earlier, of course, these free trade deals, uh, so-called free trade deals, managed trade deals for the benefit of corporations, have always been at deep, deeply embraced and at the heart of the love of Republicans. Where is the Democratic Party as a whole at the federal level on this now? You know, I, you know, I mentioned a couple of Democrats who've been outspoken. You know, Bernie on my show for 11 years railing against these deals. Um, Sherrod Brown got just reelected by six points in a state in Ohio that went for Trump. Um, I'm, but, you know, how does, how does this break down in the House and in the Senate? Have you done a whip count, essentially? So right now, with respect to this NAFTA deal, the House Democrats are remarkably unified with the Speaker. Even the corporate Democrats, the new Democrats, the ones who have been for TPP right. have basically all said the pharma crap has to come out, the environmental and labor standards have to be increased, or we're not going to budge either. And they just sent a letter to the president that was remarkable that basically said, don't make the mistake. This is the new Democratic this coalition? This is the Ron or? Kynes of the world. Yeah, the, the Tim Ryan and those guys. Uh, uh, no, Tim Ryan is not a new dumb. He's, oh, he's not. very good on trade oh, issues. Oh, he is, okay. He's a, he's a great Forgive champion me. on trade yeah. issues. And he's Beto, like, Beto O'Rourke was part of that coalition. Beto O'Rourke is in that coalition. Right. So the congressional Democrats have always been much better than the presidential wing. Right. So you've got the people running for president. They all signed a note, uh, a pledge, saying that they would oppose any NAFTA that had the had the pharma goodies in it and that didn't have stronger labor and environmental standards, including Better O'Rourke, including Biden. But the truth is, Better O'Rourke, Biden, Buttigieg, Kamala Harris, those guys have been basically in the same place that Clinton and Obama have been on trade. They're not good on trade. You have Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Tim Ryan, who've been real champions on trade. Mm. And you have a couple other candidates who've had a foot in each camp, right. like Gillibrand. So it's a mixed bag on the presidential front once again. And here's the thing, Tom, if you have another Democrat like Biden, who Trump can run against in Wisconsin, in Michigan, the way he did Clinton, oh, you're for having more jobs outsourced. Oh, you're, you're so sad TPP didn't pass. You're the big flacker for it. We're going to lose again in those states. Yeah. Be You've got to have someone to the left of him for workers on trade. It'll you be have a real to have challenge. Sanders, Warren, have, someone. Yeah, we have about 10 seconds left. Uh, it, broadly speaking, the House and Senate, how do they break down? The House is in a very good place for the Democrats right now. They won't support the deal that Trump signed. They right. say it's just more NAFTA right. and it would lock in high medicine prices. Right. On the Senate side, it's more a mixed bag. There are a lot of very corporate Senate Democrats right. um, who I would say would probably support it. But if it can't get through the House, it doesn't go to the Senate. So the whole fight's the House. Right. Over these next couple of weeks, if you see your members of Congress, folks, you've got to talk to them. There the trick go. I always say is shake their hand and don't let go until they tell